Samsung returns to the flagship game with the latest in their Galaxy S line, bringing a familiar but further refined body that is even edgier than ever. It's Joshua Vergara, what's going on everybody, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S8 and the Galaxy S8 Plus. There are two versions of the newest Samsung device and the names no longer use the word Edge, making it clearer than ever that the curved display is the Galaxy calling card moving forward. The edges have the usual tropes, like the Edge UX or any of the features that the Edge brings to the table, however, it's less about that and more about how these curved displays defy logic. The Galaxy S8 crams a 5.7 inch screen onto a body that feels much smaller than that leads on, and the curves come down to meet the hands better than ever. However, for the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, it manages to cram in a 6.2 inch display onto a body that feels kind of decent to handle in one hand. And a few things had to change in order to make this happen, mainly a resolution shift to 2960 by 1440 for an aspect ratio of 18.5 by 9. And the Galaxy S8 Plus manages to get a little bit taller rather than wider in order to accommodate this change. Another change comes in the removal of the hardware key. Yes, this is actually happening, folks. The hardware home button is now gone by the wayside, and even the Samsung logo at the top is gone as well. On the back now is the fingerprint reader, and while it doesn't feel too bad on the S8, the S8 Plus makes it feel awkward because you have to reach for it. And the change towards more display means soft keys, which means a nav bar and customization. Speaking of software, the latest addition to the Galaxy suite of apps is a whole new layer of assistance called Bixby. Bixby is a little bit like Samsung's version of Google Now and Voice Search, and it can be triggered with yet another hardware change, a new button underneath the volume rocker. Our time with Bixby only really showed the splash screen where contextual slides are shown, including news stories and calendar entries. However, further actions are available, especially with voice input, which we saw in a demo. Functions here included changing the brightness or taking a selfie. And a new layer to the camera is available now as well, as Bixby can use the camera to scan not only words, so you can translate among dozens of different languages, but you can also find product information for pretty much any item. We plan to spend a lot of time with Bixby to see what it offers and to see if it's truly a new layer of assistance or just a redundancy because you still get Google Assistant built in. And all of this is housed in a water-resistant body that we were almost aggressively invited to dunk. And that body protects a bevy of hardware bits that users have come to expect, a 10 nanometer octa-core processor that Samsung is not really telling us clearly if it's the Snapdragon or the latest Exynos, which is probably going to mean it's a mix of the two, 4 gigabytes of RAM, expandable storage, a headphone jack, thank goodness, every sensor and connection type possible, and a 3000 milliamp hour battery for the S8 and 3500 milliamp hours for the S8 Plus. The camera is also quite familiar with 12 megapixels on the rear and 8 megapixels on the front, f1.7 aperture for both. What we were told, however, was that the cameras have gotten better post-processing, so the picture should have an enhancement, but it's more on the software side than just on the sheer specs. So Samsung strives to make changes in just the right places, even if it does mean a shift in familiarity. Gone are the Samsung logos, the tactile home button, and flat panels. In are Bixby and its new button, a shifted fingerprint reader, and screens that simply don't quit. There are more capabilities that can be unlocked using the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, but you have to use their various tools in the Samsung ecosystem, like the Gear 360 and Samsung DeX. Samsung DeX blows up the already large home screen to literally desktop size with a lot of features built in. All of these different pieces will be covered here at Android Authority, and we encourage you to check out those pieces of content and video. Our first look at the Samsung Galaxy S8 makes us really excited to get our hands on the review unit sooner rather than later, but the release information currently puts pre-orders at March 30th with the phone making it to you on April 21st. Keep an eye out for our full review and our final thoughts on the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus in the coming weeks, and you can also see all of our comparisons, our quick looks, and reactions to various features of the Galaxy S8 here in the next couple of days. After that, you can actually see a little bit of behind the scenes at the actual Samsung Unpacked event if you head over to my channel, Tech and T, and you can find that link in the description below, so you can find some BTS down there. And from there, you can keep it tuned to Android Authority for our future full reviews and comparisons of the Galaxy S8 line, and you can keep it tuned here and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because Android Authority is your source for all things Android.